Life Audio. Welcome to Christian Natural Health with naturopathic Dr. Lauren DeVille. Christian Natural Health is the podcast on how to get and stay healthy God's way. You'll hear topics on nutrition, exercise, sleep, avoiding toxicity, meditating on scripture, what supplements to take, stress management, defeating anxiety and worry, how to reconcile Eastern medicine approaches with Christianity, and a whole lot more. Now, here's your host, Dr. Lauren. Welcome back to another episode of Christian Natural Health. Today I'm going to be talking about chromotherapy, otherwise known as color therapy. So chromotherapy is the scientific name for color therapy. It involves the use of wavelengths of visible light as a healing modality. It's similar to red light therapy, differing primarily in the sense that chromotherapy doesn't necessarily involve its own light source and simply involves reflecting or polarizing visible light to a particular wavelength corresponding to a particular color. So can simple color truly heal? One might not think that specific wavelengths of visible light would be particularly therapeutic simply due to their ubiquity. Familiarity breeds contempt, as they say. And yet, we do recognize and accept now that sunlight, including the full visible spectrum plus ultraviolet and infrared, has many health benefits. Also, if you consider the full electromagnetic spectrum, of which visible light is only a small slice, we do know that many of the other frequencies inversely related to wavelength have have potentially profound physiologic effects for good or for ill. Infrared is just below the visible spectrum, and there's been a great deal of research about its health benefits. And most of the EMF we're concerned about lives in the extremely low frequency range, but then there, those are also the ranges of the Schumann resonance of the Earth, and our brainwaves too, for example. Then, at the opposite extreme, ionizing radiation is known to be potentially DNA damaging and carcinogenic, yet it's also quite uh, useful for imaging technologies like x-rays. Given all of that, wouldn't it make sense that there would be potential therapeutic benefits to constant concentrated or polarized wavelengths in the visible spectrum too. So the history of chromotherapy, the idea of using colors as a therapy is definitely not new. It's been around since the time of ancient Greece, China, and Egypt. It wasn't until 1666 that Sir Isaac Newton discovered the visible electromagnetic spectrum, though, and thus the color wheel. We now know that the color wheel has some very interesting properties, too. It corresponds to both the musical scales and the Fibonacci sequence in its wavelength progression. Even back in the 1870s, effects of colors on living organisms was being studied in a systematic fashion. In the mid-20th century, effects of colors on the nervous system specifically were being investigated. To my knowledge, it's really been mostly Dr. Gerald Pollack that has brought the study of the gelatinous phase exclusion zone water to the forefront. This structured form of water contains order, which can therefore carry information, and it is this form of water that resides inside our bodies. So one possibility for how chromotherapy works is by imparting information upon the structure of cellular water via the frequencies of colored light themselves. In fact, there's a practice called hydrochromotherapy that makes this explicit, exposing samples of water to monochromatic light in an effort to use the water as a conduit for the frequency of the color. Once inside the body, directly or via the conduit of water, the colored light stimulates the cell in a process called photobiomodulation. Certain molecules in the body, called chromophores, specifically absorb light at a particular wavelength. The energy from those photons of light trigger the electrons in the chromophore to jump, emitting a corresponding color in the process. Chromophores are especially found in the mitochondria, so it may be that chromotherapy specifically acts as a non-invasive way to stimulate mitochondrial function. This is certainly true of red light therapy. But there are mitochondria in every cell of the body except red blood cells. Is it possible that certain tissues respond more to certain color wavelengths than to others? Despite how long it's been around, there are more studies than I expected to corroborate the efficacy of chromotherapy in general. One study, linked in the show notes, shows that monochromatic light of various wavelengths can have bacteria static, bactericidal, and even stimulating effects upon certain bacteria. Light spanning the entire visible spectrum on the infrared and on into the infrared spectrum were studied in another review paper, demonstrating that all wavelengths reduced inflammation, increased collagen synthesis, and new blood vessel formation. Another study shows that chromotherapy in general of differing wavelengths has been shown to affect serotonin and melatonin pathways. The light does this by stimulating the hypothalamus via the retina, effectively triggering the hypothalamic pituitary axis. 
So as far as specific wavelengths of visible light, red light therapy is certainly the best known source of photobiomodulation. Another study shows that the wavelength of 644 nanometers, the color red, is beneficial for thrombocytopenia, which is low platelets. Another study likewise suggests that the same wavelength, 644 nanometers, still red, appears to charge the superoxide dismutase enzyme, one of the body's primary antioxidant enzymes. Incidentally, yellow was the least effective color for that purpose. Another strike against yellow, another study study shows that the behavior of American prisoners found in contrast um, to soothing pink light, the yellow seemed to evoke more violence and criminal behavior. Yellow does have its place, though. In another study, yellow, 590 nanometers, and green, 538 nanometers, were specifically shown to have antibacterial efficacy against E. coli. Green light also seems to be more beneficial for those who suffer from migraines than is white, blue, amber, or red, according to another study. The rat study suggests that this is because the green light stimulates the retinal cones less than the others, which means in turn the brain's cortex lights up in less in response to, to the light. Since migraines typically present with light sensitivity, this is presumably the reason for the benefit. If sitting in a dark room isn't an option, then perhaps green lenses might be beneficial to those that are in the throes of a migraine. The same study speculates that the lesser stimulation of retinal cones and thus the cortex may be the reason why green is considered to be a soothing color. Looking at screens at night is problematic largely because the blue light tends to trigger cortisol release while suppressing melatonin release. But for those suffering from seasonal affective disorder, melatonin suppression during the daytime may be the reason for blue light's beneficial effects. Purple light, 464 nanometers, meanwhile seems to be the most beneficial for breaking down glucose, while dark violet, 400 nanometers, helps to break down cholesterol. So bottom line, the electromagnetic energy has always been all around as well as within us. After all, our brains, hearts, nerves, muscles, and bodies in their entirety run on electricity. All of the energy found on Earth ultimately derives its source from the sun's light made usable via photosynthesis in plants and via mitochondria in animals. While there's certainly still a vast amount of research still to be done, why should we be surprised that certain slices of that visible spectrum of light turn out to have specific healing properties? After all, there are an almost infinite number of medicinal compounds in plants and with, spe with specific healing properties. To me, this is just more evidence that God wants us to be well. There are just so many different ways to get there. So thanks for joining me. I will link in the show notes to the blog post this comes from, along with all of the studies mentioned, and I will see you next week. Are you looking for a holistically minded healthcare practitioner who truly treats root cause rather than symptom suppression? Unfortunately, even in the alternative healing professions, this isn't a given. That's why I've created wholehealthdoctor.com, a resource to help connect patients to healthcare practitioners in their area who share a root cause philosophy. Alternatively, most of the practitioners listed also practice telehealth. So if there isn't anyone local to you, you can still find a great practitioner to help you regain optimal health. Go to wholehealthdoctor.com. That's whole healthdr.com, type in your location or adjust the specialty that you're looking for and find the practitioner who's right for you. Thanks for listening to Christian Natural Health. This show is run by you, so please write in with topic and guest suggestions for future shows. For more great content, subscribe to Dr. Lauren's blog at www.drlaurendeville.com or follow her on Facebook or Twitter at Dr. Lauren DeVille. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to share it with your friends and give us a five-star rating in iTunes. It really helps us to stand out so other people can discover great content as well. Have a great week and God bless you.